So Kepler DC released its third quarter FI 2023 results on 16 October and boy the market have a big reaction. Its share price fell from $2.01 before the results announcement to a low of $1.72 on 20th October. So in this video, I'll be looking at what caused this decrease in share price and whether it represents a good buying opportunity if you're a long-term investor. Without further ado, let's start by looking at the third quarter financial results. As you can see, gross revenue came in at $70.8 million, while net property income and finance income was $64.6 million and $2.7 million respectively. This all recorded positive year-on-year -year increases, which was also the case for the nine-month results. Despite these positive gains, distributable income for third quarter was for a $3.9 million, representing a year-on-year -year decrease of 6.5%. The nine-month distributable income also saw a 2.1% year-on-year drop to $135.2 million. This resulted in a 3.6% year-on-year drop for third quarter DPU and a 1.2% year-on-year drop for the nine-month DPU. The main culprit for a drop in distributable income and DPU was mainly due to higher finance costs. Third quarter finance costs were $12.8 million, representing a whooping 56.9% year-on-year increase, while nine-month finance costs were $35.6 million, representing an eye-popping 67.1% year-on-year increase. No wonder the market better like a fish out of water. However, to put things into perspective and get a clearer picture, we have to compare the third quarter and second quarter results to see if there was a huge deterioration between both quarters. As there was no data on finance costs for the second quarter, I couldn't rely on the first half FY2023 results, where finance costs came in at $22.7 million. If you were to average it out over two quarters, the figure would be $11.4 million per quarter. Thus, this means that the third quarter finance costs were 12.3% higher than the average over the past two quarters. Hmm, we are off a good start. <laughs> if you look at DPU, third quarter DPU was 0.7% lower than second quarter DPU of 2.51 cents. Also, considering the changes in average debt costs, third quarter debt costs came in higher at 3.5%, while year to date average debt costs was at 3.2%, which was a 10 basis point increase as compared to the second quarter. With no loans left to refinance in FY2023 and 4.1% of loans to be refinanced in FY2024, I expect that cost to continue inching up in the near future, mainly due to floating loans and the loans that will be refinanced in FY2024. Unless of course a rate cut happens next year, which I think is quite unlikely, but then again, you never really know. In terms of aggregate leverage percentage, it remains quite okay at 37.2% as of third quarter FY 2023. This leaves sufficient debt headroom before hitting capital DC rates internal cap of 40%. Occupancy rate wise, third quarter number came at 98.3%. This was a slight drop from the 98.5% occupancy rate recorded in second quarter. Slightly mitigating this fall occupancy rate was the positive rental reversion the capital DC rate had in the third quarter. As a whole, while Kepler DC reads third quarter results unstarted by any means, I don't think it was the main cause of the 40% drop in share price. Instead, I feel much of it was due to the fear of bankruptcy of one of Kepler DC reads main tenant. In its analyst report, DBS highlighted the main listing for the three quantum data centers New Delhi Media reported a loss in its first half FY2023 results. This led to concerns about the potential financial impact to Kepler DC Reads earnings and DPU in the future. Kepler DC Reads management informed that they do not have visibility into the utilization rate of the quantum data centers as they are master leased to new telling media. They added that full rental payments were still being made and as of earnings reporting, no default has occurred yet. Currently, no telling media contributes to around 7.6% of Kepler DC Reads gross rental income. DBS expects this amount to rise to 10 to 11% once Quantum Data Center 3 is fully fitted by the end of 2023. This task makes New Tele Media the second largest contributor to Kepler DC Reads gross rental income. Should New Tele Media face financial difficulties or in a worst case scenario bankruptcy, DBS expects a maximum 60% hit to Kepler DC Reads DPU. However, it's also useful to note that Kepler DC Reed management informed that their sponsor has a team in China ready to take over operations and management of the quantum data centers 
s h o n y o telling me they'll face bankruptcy and default on their lease. To evaluate the possibility of a bankruptcy of n e o t e l e m e d i a in the near term, I decided to take a look into its first half FY2023 financial statements. As you can see, n e o t e l e m e d i a s current liabilities exceed its current assets. If you look into its receivables and payables, you'll notice that most of the receivables are due in over 180 days. However, for the payables portion, they are due much earlier. So in a straight line comparison, there's a shortfall in financial cover from the receivables to the payables. To cover this temporary shortfall, n e o t e l e m e d i a could opt to sell its property part and equipment. However, it should be noted that a significant portion of property part and equipment is already being used to secure its current borrowings of 842.7 million Hong Kong dollars. The current total value of property part and equipment used to secure its borrowings stands at 637.6 million Hong Kong dollars. This means that there is still a residual value of 1.04 billion Hong Kong dollars to cover temporary shortfall in new t e l e m e d i a s current receivables and payables and also current lease liabilities. It's still enough to pay for any unsecured current borrowings they are due within a year. As you can see, only 214.9 million Hong Kong dollars of current borrowings are payable within a year. The rest are payable either after one year or on demand. It should also be noted that n e o t e l e m e d i a still has unutilized banking facilities of 1.53 billion Hong Kong dollars. And that some of the borrowings are secured with assets not related to n e o t e l e m e d i a they are owned by the board of directors. So long story short, I do not foresee a bankruptcy of n e o t e l e m e d i a in 2023 or 2024 if everything remains status quo. But of course in the long run, they are headed for bankruptcy if their business operations do not improve. And this will definitely impact Capital DC REIT as the Quantum Data Centers are leased to New Tele Media for 15 years, starting from 2021 for Quantum DC 1 and 2022 for Quantum DC 2 and 3. Besides the fear of bankruptcy of one of Capital DC REIT's main tenants, Capital DC REIT was also part of a broader market sell-off of bigger S REITs. As seen from the IHS REIT Leaders Index, which contain big REITs like Maple Trees, Capital Lands, and Frasers, it has declined by 4.1% since 17 October. This could be due to institutional investors selling off REITs after the weaker results of Capital DC REIT, given that they are one of the first few big REITs to report earnings for the third quarter season. Furthermore, the possibility of an escalation in the Gaza conflict and the comments of Fed Chairman Jerome Powell that REITs will stay higher for longer could have all partially contributed to the sell-off in big S REITs. In addition, there were also fears that REITs have to do equity fundraisings for acquisitions in the near future. In terms of capital DC REIT, management had previously signaled that equity fundraising would most likely be required to fund the final payment of Quantum Data Center 3 towards the end of FY2023. This is to be expected given that Capital D Series internal gearing limit of 40% only leaves it a debt headroom of $182 million. Furthermore, this headroom will most likely be reduced by a year end revaluation of the overseas data centers. Hence, it will be highly unlikely that Capital D Series will take on more debt in the near future. Collectively, all these factors could have led to the huge decrease in Capital D C REIT share price. But to be honest, some of these news aren't really new. I guess this further reinforces the notion that the markets can be irrational at times. Now, on to the million dollar question. Is it a good time to invest in Capital D C REIT now? Based on my previous analysis video of the FY2022 results, I indicated that I felt the fair price of Capital D C REIT was within the range of $1.80 to $1.85. While much has changed since then, I feel that the current price of $1.74 is still a rather fair value range and has not really reached a discounted range yet. If you're thinking whether to invest in Capital D3 right now, let me give you three broad scenarios to consider. The first is that everything remains pretty much status quo and Capital D3 only has to deal with higher finance costs and standard operating ups and downs for the rest of 2023 and 2024. In this case, if we look at a conservative full year DPU of 9.9 cents for 2023 and a full year DPU of 9.65 cents for 2024. This gives you a dividend yield of 5.69% and 5.55% respectively. For the second scenario, we much like the first scenario, but this time no telemedia decreased bankruptcy 
and capital DCB sponsor take over the management of the quantum data centers. For this scenario, I will use a 8% negative impact to capital DCB's DPU, which was half of what DBS expected. In this case, full year DPU for 2023 will remain unchanged, while DPU for 2024 will fall to 8.8 cents instead. This gives you a dividend yield of 5.06% for 2024. Now for the third scenario, this time New Telemedia goes bankrupt at the end of 2023 and Capital DC Responsor take over the quantum data centers. For this, I will use DBS prediction of a 16% impact to DPU. This means that full year DPU for 2023 will be at 9.63 cents, while DPU for 2024 will be at 8 cents. This gives you a dividend yield of 5.53% and 4.6% respectively. For me, I feel that scenario 1 will most likely be the case moving forth, which is why I bought a small amount of capital DC read units at a price of $1.73. On a side note, you can follow my Twitter, <coughs> or should I say X, for all my market trades, random postings, and earnings updates for certain stocks and reads. I think for anyone looking to invest in capital DC read now, you need to have holding power till at least 2025. This means that during the next one year or so, you will not need to touch the cash invested in capital DC read. In the long run, I still feel the capital DC read will deliver positive returns to unit holders. Of course, anything can happen in the future, and I will definitely update you guys should there be any massive fundamental changes. If you're a current capital DC read unit holder or looking to invest in capital DC read, let me know what your thoughts on your share price drop and your third quarter results in the comments below. As usual, I really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful. With that, I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.